the better segmented data, the better marketing and sales. So let's look at the way how you can segment your data in HubSpot. Hi, it's Anna from Automate Now. Let's look at segmentation today. So probably uh, your CRM looks just now like this. It's quite messy. You have some really good clients here at the front. Some of them are usually do case studies. Some of them are random. Some of them are quite good, big, small. Uh, you have a couple of uh, time wasters and imposers in here, those pretend pumpkins. At the very back, you have a lot of different contacts who are not your customers just yet, but you're kind of not really doing anything with them. They're just sitting in your CRM. At the very back, you have people which are your competitors trying to steal the business from you. So. Is that a good solution situation to be in? Probably not. What you would like is to have this very nicely segmented CRM. Every single customer is in the same basket as customers and prospects were similar to him. You have some good case studies at the forefront that will represent the whole spectrum of all other businesses and cases you have in your CRM. You even have space for your, not clients, but introducers. So people who they will not become your clients ever, but they know a lot of people who are relevant to you and can introduce them to you, bringing you new business. Right. How to achieve this? Uh, uh, in very, very simple few steps, in simple words, this is what you need to do. First, to think about your ideal client and buyer personas. Who are you targeting? What are the customers that are really easy to work with? It's not difficult to get them. They pay good money and they're a dream to work with. You will have a few of them probably already. Not all of your customers will be like that, but you're aiming to get a majority of them uh, like that. Also, think about a couple of other buyer personas that are also really good for your business. Don't do too many, though. You cannot be everything to everyone. Next step is to decide what you want to be saying and to whom. So basically, your marketing messaging. And then uh, the bit we're going to look at today is deciding what are your key data points, okay? Because based on them, you're going to be then be listing, be building lists and views and do your actual marketing and communications. So let's go back into our HubSpot. And I'm looking at a contact. Uh, uh, for this example, let's build uh, all the segmentation based on the contact. Um, let's assume that we are a business that is uh, helping companies e-commerce companies with their technology and making sure that all the different technologies is used they're talking to each other and uh, that's making uh, running the business much much easier and smoother so what do i need to know about my prospects what are the key data points that i need in order to be able to grow my business Definitely, I need to know what kind of technologies they use, what kind of accounting software they have, what kind of CRM software they have. So because once you have the picture of what they use, you will be able to send them very targeted uh, marketing communications. And then when you decide to nurture them a little bit more through sales efforts, then again, your communications will be much more targeted and on point. Another piece of data that is important for this case is where they are selling on. This is an e-commerce business. So are they selling on Amazon and eBay? Are they selling uh, in their own online store? Are they selling in other countries uh, where, like, for example, maybe Amazon or eBay are not biggest because that specific country will have their own e-commerce uh, platform? For example, in Poland, it's Allegro. So that's something you need to know because it, it's an indication of how big and how serious that particular business is. I also want to know what industry data they sell to. So is it toys and games for kids or is it bachelorette gadgets for, for, for women or is it shaving um, beauty products for men, for example? Knowing this, again, will help me target uh, my marketing. It would be good to know also where they are. Probably, yes. However, because e-commerce is so wide and global, international, that information is not crucial for me probably in order to be able to uh, deliver my sales effort and my marketing. Uh, in a targeted and segmented way, right? So for this particular business, I've identified that these are the key data points that I need. Now, how to get them into HubSpot? Uh, obviously, these are just properties. So then you would have to uh, go into your HubSpot and build a couple of different properties. So we'll show you how. Go through the top right corner, you have your settings. And then on the left, under data management, you have properties. In this case, we build them under contact, but you can build them under company. Again, depends. It's your decision where you store the key information, whether it's a person or whether it's a company. Uh, and in here, again, I will show you. Uh, that's the one that I've bought, and I've changed that to be a multi-checkbox. You could do a drop-down if only one option is supposed to be picked, or you could do multi, uh, multi uh, multiple checkboxes. Could be uh, any 
really there's actually quite a lot of different property types you can pick from a uh, small tip maybe if you're a marketing industry it's probably i'll show you uh, it's probably better to uh, build your own industry property because the one that HubSpot provides, yes, HubSpot will, will put some data into this property when you're creating a brand new company in your HubSpot. However, it's not always accurate and probably you will want your own property that will list all of the countries that you're interested in and then that will kind of help you to be more precise when you're building your lists um, and only focus on the countries that you really want to focus on uh, in that particular campaign. Um, Right, so um, that's where you create properties uh, uh, in the in the properties uh, section here on the left. Now, let's assume that you have all the properties that you wanted to. Now, the second step would be to make sure these are populated. So, can you or can you and uh, can any other team members help out with populate that data? If you have one hundred uh, um, lines, you know, have spots should be super easy. If you have one thousand, maybe a bigger job, but so so worth it to do it because what you do next, once you have all those properties, you will then go into building lists. Let's say I'm going to build a brand new list. It will be a contact big list because I want to have a list of people with email addresses in there, which will be um, industry, I don't know, let's see, uh, beauty. That's going to be an active list uh, because I want people to be added and removed into that list based on what values they have in the industry. And then uh, I'm going into filters and I'm going to pick the industry from here because this is a free type property i have to type in what i think uh, should be in those but if you change that to a drop down it will be so much easier because you just pick from the list you want to have anything that has beauty or cosmetics or um i don't know the, the protein powders are listed in there uh, in the industry uh, so beauty and cosmetics my two so i'm saving my list now this list will be there live waiting for me to use and how you can use those lists. Uh, the first point is to do marketing emails. So let's say I'm sending a marketing campaign this month and I'm targeting one from beauty or cosmetics industry that uh, have uh, zero as their accounting system, which I will know because I have that data uh, already input in HubSpot. Uh, so that my messaging will be very, very targeted and I can use that list in order to send this marketing email. How else that list can be used? I can use the list in the workflow so that anyone on this list is in war is enrolled into workflow and then the workflow will send those people a mess some some kind of marketing email or maybe it can be a, an action to set a task for the contact owner in order to communicate with them through like a one to one give them a call and give them a, a personalized one to one uh, email for example. Whatever segmentation you do, uh, you build your properties. Uh, it's quite handy to then build some reports based on those properties where you can track. You can have a report where um, which will tell you that only 50 out of 100 of your contacts do have values in the property uh, tech stack and the 50 people do not have any values in there, which would be a trigger to, hey, guys, have a look at the 50 who do not have any values. Let's see if we can collect that information. So that will help like a data cleanse dashboard with the reports where uh, all the properties where data is missing could help you make sure that the database maintains clean and you guys are collecting all the relevant information in order to actually do a proper segmentation going forward, not just as a one-off uh, exercise.